Welcome. E aí, galera, beleza? Bem-vindo à nossa comunidade. Welcome to our community. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's OGC here. Welcome to today's video. Today, we're going to be looking at the different uh, dwarf troops in case you are considering uh, playing the dwarf race. And if you are not considering playing the dwarf, you might want to know more about the troops because you'll be facing a lot of dwarfs. Um, so let's uh, let's jump in without uh, further ado. And uh, just so you guys know, I am playing dwarf uh, for right now. I have no idea what the future holds with the castle level 50 patch coming up in June. But for right now, I am dwarf, and so far I'm loving it. So the very first uh, troop type that we have uh, are miners. Uh, miners are equivalent to your rock and swords, the human spears, uh, the melee skeletons for for lich, and huntresses for sylph. So they have something called a bagel, battle whatever, and they begin the, the battle uh, with an armor on, and uh, the armor is like equal uh, to their health. I, I believe it's slightly higher than their actual HP, and as long as they have that armor on, they're going to um, they're going to be immune to moral collapse. Uh, they're going to get a bonus attack damage and attack speed, and then what what goes really well with this is the uh, uh, crushing consecutive hit which has a 40% chance to stun enemy troops for 3.5 seconds and deal extra damage. Uh, a V chance of um, stun target is reduced by, uh, for, for 3 seconds. So, uh, in the theory, these look absolutely amazing because they should be relatively tanky. They should be doing a lot of stuns against the enemies. Uh, however, the reality of it is, uh, in pretty much every situation, mechs are better. Uh, we have slain the Thmark. I, I think he did pr some pretty extensive uh, recent testing with uh, the miners, and they just uh, came up short in, in every aspect. Uh, when we look at the Awakened versions, we have the... Uh, we'll start with the Dire Ones. So the Dire Ones have a, a ticking bomb, which pretty much they, they put a, uh, a bomb onto a target that they're attacking, um, and when if that target gets hit by a headshot, it blows up, or it, it blows up after eight seconds, um, it deals target max health uh, damage and burning. So these look like they should be able to take out trees. However, uh, by the time that the bombs go off, the battle's already decided. Eight seconds for, for the bomb to actually count down and blow up is a very long time. And honestly, guys, if snipers are, are headshotting things, it really doesn't matter too much about the bombs. I mean, a headshot from a sniper, the thing's going to go down anyways. It, it will it will almost one-shot your, your dragon. It's, it's insane. So, anyways, when we look at these end ones, these end ones have uh, pincer bombs. Uh, so, while their armor persists, they have 20% chance of releasing a small uh, uh, pyro pincer effect that uh, plants a bomb on a target, and it explodes when the target's been hit five times by ammo users. So... This, this might have some use in, in the void. If, if I had to pick between the two, I would go with the Zen Miners, uh, personally. And where this might actually be somewhat useful, although it's, it's really not at all, um, might be in the void if you're using blasters. Uh, just because you're going to get so many consecutive hits, things are going to be blowing up all, all the time. Uh, but the takeaway for PvP, uh, Miners are not worth it. Uh, don't, don't go with them. Just... Just stay away from miners and you will have a much better time as Dwarf. Hopefully that changes sometime in the future, but for now that's just how it is. So next we're going to go on to the bread and butter of, uh, of Dwarf. And I, I think we'll, we'll start off with, uh, with the type that uh, isn't, isn't the more preferred one. And that is the, uh, the Marksman, or most people will call them uh, Snipers, just because that's what they are. Uh, so snipers have a headshot, which attacks have a 5% chance uh, to deal a headshot, which does 100 times the damage. So if you guys look at the uh, the damage for, for this, if you imagine 100 times that, that that's some insane damage. It's uh, a, a headshot is going to pretty much take down uh, and anything. And if it is a super tanky thing, it's going to drop it to like half health or uh, it, it, it's pretty ridiculous. So... Uh, you can increase the headshot percent chance through equipment and uh, uh, research and everything else. So they are ammo users, they have a bonus range, they are humanoid. Um, so with the, with the dire uh, snipers, they have a salvage ammo, which each time they get a headshot, they're going to restore 15% of their ammo. So pretty much these snipers are going to uh, have, have a really good chance at uh, keeping their ammo really high, which means they're going to attack very frequently. 
sounds really good, right? But if we compare that to the, uh, uh, the Zen snipers, which is much more preferred, they have a precision, precision shooting, which increases headshot chance by 2% and increases the headshot damage by a factor of 50. So that pretty much means that just having Zen snipers is going to bring your, your uh, headshot chance from 5% all the way up to 7% before you start adding in anything from, from equipments. Uh, so that's a pretty huge jump, guys. That's like a 40% increase from 5% all the way up to 7%. It, it might not seem like much, but those percentages for, for the headshot, they really do matter. And increasing the damage by a factor of 50, this just makes them so deadly. So snipers are the go-to unit for uh, for dwarf uh, for uh, I think for sieging wall doing wall damage. We've seen some crazy stuff from from Tain. Uh, he can take down uh, like full players walls with one attack using snipers. It's pretty wild. Snipers are going to be your go-to for PvP because they can take down any unit. Uh, snipers are kind of the the bread and butter of dwarf. They are the reason to go dwarf uh, besides from Max. So we'll jump into the next thing, and the next one is actually going to be um, the blasters. So they're, they're called uh, bombers now, but they used to be called blasters. Uh, most people will, uh, that's been around for a while, will we'll end up calling them blasters. So they uh, they have something called uh, uh, black powder there, which uh, it pretty much just, they do AoE damage. Snipers do like personal damage um, to, to one individual. Bombers do AOE damage. They have something called a uh, fire off, and what happens is is it's an active ability, so you have to use it, and it also puts all of your other skills on cooldown. When you use this, instead of attacking normally, they're going to rapidly attack, and I mean like rapidly. That uh, they'll, they'll deplete their ammo very, very fast, but it's going to be a ton of AOE burst damage. Now blasters used to be really good. <laughs> they they were. Um, the part of the reason why you don't see blasters uh, anymore is any type of CC that's hard. So a uh, black hole, a black hole uh, is going to n uh, cancel and negate the whole uh, fire off uh, act active ability. And if it gets canceled, you cannot recast it. It's a whole waste of, of a skill and your troops lose out on that bonus. Um, blasters can still be very good. And I'll, I'll tell you the, the situations that, that they will be in. And so they do exceptional damage when, when you do sieging, and also they are ammo users. So when, when we look at the Awakened versions of, of the bombers, we have these Zen bombers, and what they have is um, they have improved uh, fire off, which uh, fires all ammunition in set, set amount of time. Uh, but they also have, I, I believe this is uh, Bombard, that's what the, this one is. So the Zen Blasters gain bonus range of 3 and a chance to shoot an additional lower damaging rockets at nearby targets. So this is going to give them additional range, which they actually really need. And also it's going to do a little bit more damage. When we compare that to the, uh, the Dire Blasters, the Dire Blasters have uh, improved uh, Ballistics, which uh, gain bonus area of attack and accuracy uh, when uh, not out of armor. And I believe these are the ones that... Uh, they're good. Um, they, they also do a little bit more AOE damage. They're, they're very good all, all around. So the times that you should use uh, blasters or consider using blasters and the, the way that they were used in the past was when it comes to uh, fighting against humans, the natural shield of the swordsman reduces things from like darts and bullets and uh, arrows, which makes them a, a little bit more tanky than anything else. So when, when it comes to blasters, the blasters penetrate right through that when it comes to the swordsmen. So if you're attacking like a human garrison, uh, blasters will actually cut right through the, uh, the, the swords like, like, like butter. They'll just go right through them. Snipers work as well. I, I think in, in the current times, the snipers is still better overall. But blasters, uh, blasters can be very good when it comes to uh, uh, PVM stuff such as the void. But for the, for the most part, everything is about snipers right now. Next, we, we have uh, mechs. So, mechs, um, mechs are super tanky. Uh, they are insanely tanky. They have something called force field, and force field uh, makes them take 65% uh, less damage from ranged. 
So right off the bat, they're going to be super tanky. Most things in the game that deal high damage are going to be ranged. That is, it's not true for everything because you got monks that are that are going to be high damage towards max. But most of the things in the game uh, that deal really really high DPS is going to be range. Uh, next, they have uh, something called uh, Overload, which is an active ability similar to that of the Fire Off or the Blasters. It will uh, affect the cooldown of all of your other skills. However, when they're in Overload, they're going to um, increase their uh, attack speed, and uh, it just uh, it's a good way to help speed up the battle. This is not a skill or an active that you want to use towards the beginning of, of the fight. This is something that maybe at the end when you're depleted of, of everything else or in very specific situations when you need your mechs to do a big push, uh, consider using. But most of the time your, your mechs are just going to be tanking. They're, they're not going to be the ones necessarily pushing unless you're fighting skeletons. Uh, they also have something called a uh, jill bit attack which deals uh, heavy damage to massive units with a huge chill bit so max will be good going up against trees uh, they also have a uh, razor strike uh, which uh, swings a massive razor uh, dealing damage to all nearby troops so this is anti-cluster uh, troops so because of the razor they're going to cut through things such as uh, the the skeletons they're also going to do fairly well versus human swordsmen um, it helps them out qu quite a bit uh, next, they have modular uh, defense, which makes them uh, immune to uh, moral swings and poison damage. Uh, so that's that's that absolutely huge. So their moral will not collapse, and they will never be poisoned. Uh, next, they have, uh, and, and this is for the dire ones. They have electric discharge, which every second attack unleashes an electric strike that damages enemies in an area and stuns them. Enemies struck by the uh, electricity take 40% increased damage from dire battle mechs for 3 seconds. So this is going to allow uh, your mechs to actually stun up the enemy for a little bit and they're going to take slightly more damage from the actual uh, mechanic. Uh, where, this is, uh, where this gets interesting is attack speed will actually benefit uh, your, your mechs. Do not... Don't just focus that, but I, I'm just saying that it will help sum things up because that's every second attack, and that's for the dire ones only. Uh, so going with the dire mechs uh, versus the zen ones, it's going to offer a little bit more offensive uh, uh, ability for the mechs, but also the stuns, which is very good for def defense. Now if, if we uh, switch over and we look at the zen mechs, which I think have a cooler picture, uh, they have everything the same, however they have field charge. Which is another active skill. It's going to uh, you'll have to cast it just like any other active skill. It's going to affect the cooldown of all of your other skills. And what it does is it increases um, force field strength by ten percent. Uh, so first of all, that's going to affect uh, how much damage that they reduce. Uh, that part is not the active part. You can see right from here, seventy five percent less damage from range, which is a lot. When cast uh, shields on, uh, it shields non-mech allies behind the force field for 15 seconds. So basically, anything that's behind the mechs when you when you do use this for the next 15 seconds are going to gain the force field of 75% uh, less range damage that they take. This is huge for for protecting uh, your, your troops. I have seen some people use these, and I. I don't know. I, I guess uh, some people can pull it off, um, but I think in in the the current setup where everything is about having heroes on on the power side and ha having your snipers behind the heroes, uh, I don't think the Zen ones are going to be preferred. I, I think most people, including myself, will go with the Dire Max. However, for certain Void Sages or uh, PVM or even possibly Sieging, the Zen ones might might be better. It, in those situations however more often than not in P, uh, pvp it's actually going to be the dire ones that went out that's not to say that these end ones are useless it's just a, a, a different play style for them and finally we have the last uh, troop type when it comes to um when it comes to dwarf so this is actually going to be the tank now i there was a time when mech tank was a really good combination I miss it, and I really do think that the tanks need some love. I mean, they're a tank, and they're going up against archers, or a tree, or <laughs> a, a swordsman. Could you imagine a modern tank being around in uh, in like mid medieval times with like a knight charging at it? 
Come on, tanks need some love. Anyways, <laughs> tanks uh, tanks take up a three by three area, which makes them great for for placement. And for tanks, what they have is uh, they have a double. Uh, they, they they have a cannon. So the the cannons uh, have good firepower, deals massive damage to, to building units, which which is pretty good. They also have gatling guns, which deal extra damage with uh, rapid fire. This is going to affect troops that are closer to them. They also have a uh, Hellforge fitting, which uh, spray, sprays like a, it's like a mini flamethrower. These things are loaded, they just don't do much damage. They are massive, uh, and they have uh, modular defense, which kind of like mechs, they, they aren't going to take poison damage, they're not going to have moral collapse. And they do do pretty good at going up against the cluster races, but for a tank, like, they, they they need they need more love they they need more love so for the uh for the zen tanks they have something called barrage which gives uh mountain machine guns a 30 percent chance to shoot a bonus missile that deals heavy physical damage to enemies in the target area and reduces damage against mech units by 25 percent lasts for two seconds so basically they're going to put out a, they're going to discharge a range projectile uh, and, and it's going to deal decent damage, but also reduce the damage that the enemy does to, to your max. Overall, win-win. Now, if, if we look at the uh, the dire tanks, they have everything the same. However, they have homing beacon. So its primary attacks mark uh, enemy target with a homecoming beacon for 1.5 seconds, increasing allied uh, accuracy, critical hit chance, and critical hit damage against it by 10%. So this is going to be really good if it goes up and say it, it hits a tree. Everybody's going to do more damage and they're going to hit more often than not going up against the tree. So in a nutshell, that is Dwarf. Dwarf is a, a really strong grace for right now. I, I have a feeling uh, it will be strong for a long time. Uh, that, that's my prediction because mechs will always be tanky and you can never go wrong with snipers. Uh, it just, it is what it is. Uh, so... Hopefully you guys got something out of this. Um, I'm enjoying playing Dwarf. Feel free to give it a try. Uh, if you guys like this video, I, I have a bunch of other ones on, on the channel. So hit the thumbs up button and subscribe so you guys can get uh, notifications for whenever new videos come out. There's a bunch of archived information. So if you're a new, newer player, go check it all out. There's, there's so much information here. So with that, guys, I, I hope you guys have a fantastic day after you guys go down in the description and check out all the goodies down there. And I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Take care.